In this lesson, we will talk about one of the most important theorems in the practice of statistics. It is called the Central Limit Theorem, and it helps us determine the sampling distribution of x bar, our sample mean. We already know that if the parent population is normally distributed, in other words, all of our random variables from our parent population are normally distributed with mean mu and standard deviation sigma, under that case we know that x bar, our sample mean, is exactly normally distributed with the same center as our parent population, and the standard deviation of our sample mean is equal to the standard deviation of our parent population divided by the square root of our sample size. So the standard deviation of our sample mean decreases as our sample size increases. We want to know, can we determine the sampling distribution of the x bar, our sample mean, if our parent population is not normally distributed? The central limit theorem says that we can determine the sampling distribution of x bar regardless of the distribution of our parent population as long as our sample size is large enough, as long as our parent population has mean mu and it has finite standard deviation sigma. If the po parent population has mean mu, it has finite standard deviation sigma, and if our sample size is large enough, then we know that the sampling distribution of x bar, our sample mean, is approximately, approximately normally distributed with mean mu and standard deviation sigma over square root of n. When the parent population is normal, the sampling distribution of x bar is exactly normal. If the conditions for the central limit theorem apply, then the sampling distribution of x bar will be approximately normal. It can be approximated by this normal distribution. It does not matter what the distribution of our parent population is. The parent population could be symmetric but non-normal. It could be right or left skewed. It could be bi bimodal. The central limit theorem says that as long as the sample size is large enough, eventually the distribution of sa the sample mean will become approximately normal. Typically, 30 is a conservative number needed as a sample size in order for the central limit theorem to apply. The more non-normal that our parent population is, the larger the sample size we need. In this case, if we had a symmetric but non-normal parent population, we would not need a sample size as large as 30. A much smaller sample size would be sufficient to guarantee that the sample mean would be approximately normally distributed. In the case where the parent population is bimodal, here's where you need the much greater sample size to ensure that the sample mean will be approximately normally distributed. Many of the inference procedures used in the practice of statistics rely on an assumption that your sample mean is normally distributed. If we do not know the distribution of our parent population, we could be stuck. But with the central limit theorem, as long as the sample size is sufficient, 30 or greater, we can say that x bar is approximately normally distributed and the inference procedures can be used. So the central limit theorem is a crucial and critical theorem in the practice of statistics.